And here is the cursed house. The tour guide's voice was a haunting whisper that cut through the cold Halloween night. She stood before the group of tourists, her eyes filled with dread as she gazed upon the foreboding mansion. She continued, This house has a tragic history. It is said that the Psyche family met a fate so horrifying that their spirits still linger within these walls. Takio, the husband, was consumed by jealousy and rage, leading to a horrifying act of violence that shattered this household. Kayako was his wife, a woman driven to despair by her husband's actions. Her spirit now roams these halls, her long hair concealing her face, and her voice, a guttural anguished croak that echoes through the very soul of anyone who dares to enter. Her voice grew darker as she went on. Their young son, Toshio, was innocent in all of this, but he too met a tragic fate. His ghostly form can be seen playing with their pet cat. She pulled up a photo of the family on her phone. Mar, the family cat, was also a victim of this curse. Its spirit is said to lead those who enter this place deeper into the horrors that lie within. As she recounted the dark tales of the house and its cursed inhabitants, the group felt a chill run down their spines as they learned more. They learned that Takio murdered his wife in a fit of jealousy. He also killed their pet cat and their son before taking his own life. These violent and traumatic deaths left lingering negative energy in the house, which manifested as a curse. The moon hung low in the sky, casting eerie shadows on the old house. Her voice took on an urgent note. Do not enter this place. The curse that clings to it is insidious and once it takes hold, there is no escape. However, the warning seemed to fall on deaf ears as Alex, Emmy, and Mark exchanged determined glances. Once the ghost tour concluded, the three friends reconvened at a nearby cafe, sipping on hot cider to ward off the autumn chill. We should go back there, Alex suggested with a mischievous grin. Emmy and Mark hesitated for a moment, then nodded in agreement. Excitement filled their conversation as they made plans to return to the cursed house. Armed with flashlights and curiosity, they made their way back to the mansion. As they cautiously moved towards the entrance, a strange sensation washed over them. Then, as if in response to their unease, a cat materialized before them. Its eyes glowed as it fixed its gaze upon them. Nami couldn't help herself. She knelt down and extended a hand to pet the cat which began to purr. The friends exchanged fearful glances but pressed on. The cat led them through the front door of the house, its eerie meows guiding their path through the dimly lit hall. They couldn't turn back now, but as they ventured deeper into the house, the layout seemed to change before their very eyes. The rooms became a disorienting maze, with doors that led to nowhere and hallways that twisted and turned. Panic set in as they realized that they were separated. Mark wandered through the ever-changing labyrinth of the cursed house, when he stumbled upon a room that seemed ordinary at first. It appeared to be a bedroom frozen in time. An antique dresser stood against one wall, and a mirror reflected the eerie surroundings. However, as Mark stepped further into the room, he felt the floor beneath him give way, and he tumbled into darkness. With a jolt, he landed on the cold, damp ground, gasping for air. To his horror, he found himself in a narrow subterranean chamber, partially submerged in murky water. Panic surged through him as he realized that he was trapped in a hidden basement that had remained concealed for years. The water seemed to have a presence of its own, its surface rippling ominously. Mark's heart raced as he struggled to maintain his composure, his flashlight casting eerie shadows on the water's surface. Suddenly, the room changed. The wall seemed to close in around him, and the water level began to rise steadily. Fear coursed through him as he realized that escape was impossible. He hammered on the damp, cold walls, desperately searching for a way out. It was then that he heard it the faint eerie giggle of a child. <laughs> the atmosphere grew even colder as the water in the room began to ripple and churn. Slowly from the depths of the murky water, a pale ghostly form emerged. 
Toshio, the vengeful child of the Psyche family, materialized before him. An unsettling grin played upon his lips. The room's oppressive darkness closed in around them, and Mark, paralyzed by terror, watched as Toshio glided toward him. His mouth opened, and Mark could see an unnatural darkness within. Then, with an eerie and unsettling sound, black liquid oozed from Toshio's mouth, staining the water around him. Instead of words, he emitted a haunting meow, reminiscent of a tortured cat. Mark's trembling hand extended toward Toshio, but before he could react, Toshio's fingers brushed against his, sending a paralyzing chill through his entire being. The water seemed to obey Toshio's will. It continued to rise, submerging Mark as he struggled to breathe, his vision growing hazy until he couldn't fight it any longer. Mark's desperate gasps for air were drowned out by the haunting laughter of Toshio. In another part of the house, Emmy unknowingly entered a room that held a sinister secret. The air grew icy cold and the lights flickered ominously. Shadows danced on the walls, revealing a cursed shrine adorned with photographs of the Psyche family. There was Takio, his face twisted with jealousy and rage, and Kayako, her eyes filled with anguish. Toshio, the young son, stared with an innocence. A chill ran down her spine. To her horror, their expressions seemed to change before her eyes. They grinned, their eyes dark. As she tried to tear her eyes away from the photographs, Kayako's voice began echoing through the room. It was a guttural, anguished croak that seemed to echo from all directions. Terrified, Emmy stumbled backward. As she rushed towards the door, her heart raced. She reached the hallway, gasping for air, and her eyes fell upon an attic door. It was partially open. Before she could think twice, a figure emerged from the other side. A ghostly, disheveled woman with long, matted black hair obscuring her face. Her eyes gleamed with malevolence as she moved towards Emmy, her joints cracking. Her body twisted and contorted in ways no living being should. It was Kayako. Emmy tried to flee, but there was no exit. Kayako's hand reached out, grasping her ankle with supernatural strength. Emmy's scream of agony pierced the air as she was dragged into the clutches of the malevolent spirit. As Emmy's scream of agony pierced the air, Kayako's hair shifted, parting to reveal her contorted face. Her eyes gleamed with malevolence as she pulled Emmy closer. Emmy's world descended into darkness as Kayako's grasp snuffed out her life, her anguished voice echoing through the cursed room. The cursed house had claimed yet another victim. Amid the horrors that enveloped them, only one of the friends, Alex, managed to escape the clutches of the cursed house. Initially, he found himself trapped in one of its darkest rooms, paralyzed and helpless. The anguished screams of his friends reverberated through the halls, tormenting his senses. Within that room, the vengeful spirit of Takeo himself held him in a paralyzing grip, forcing him to bear witness to the torment of his friends. The haunting laughter of the ghost filled the room as it relished in their suffering. Alex's body remained immobile, his heart heavy with dread as he listened. But then, Alex managed to break free from the entity's grip. His limbs surged with newfound strength, and he fought his way out of the cursed house. As he stumbled through the garden, gasping for air, he encountered the tour guide, her eyes devoid of humanity. Her voice was no longer warm and welcoming, but dripping with malice. I warned you, now you can never escape the curse. The words sent a shiver down Alex's spine. Before he could react, the tour guide's hand brushed against his, sending a shock of coldness through his body. Alex felt an excruciating pain as his mind unraveled. Haunting visions and memories flooded his thoughts and he clutched his head in agony. His sanity slipped away, piece by piece, and his screams joined the chorus of tormented souls trapped forever in the cursed house. The curse had claimed yet more victims, leaving a legacy of horror that would continue to draw souls into its dark embrace for all eternity. 
Alex would forever bear the scars of that fateful Halloween night, driven mad by the malevolence that clung to him like a shadow.